got all the plastic up and now we are testing it out to see how quickly it will warm up in here. Test. It's already blazing in here. That's on high. It's literally like a minute. It's already gone up a couple degrees. I mean, if we turn it on a high for like five minutes, it's gonna be like t-shirt weather again. I'm here. like sweating already. I'm sweating, but I got layers on stuff from work, so. And this is already, already over 50, so we can gloss in this. It's almost 60. All right, well, I think that will solve our winter right? issue. Yeah. And listen, that's a high for, we're pushing 60. It's only, the video is 210, so. Yeah. Whew. Yeah, that's a high. I mean, I wouldn't want to leave it running while we're in here only because like, Ventilation. Uh, yeah, oxygen. But the sides are still open, so we should still be getting some air in here. Put your hand over here. Oh, sorry. In the bow. You can feel all the way over here now. 60. Yeah, we're, we're pushing 60. All right. So I'm going to turn that right off now. Like I said, if we can get it up to this temperature and work. Yeah. Like I said, we'll shut it off while we work just to be safe. And then when we're done, we turn it on low and just let it go. That's high right now. So. Yeah, so shut it off and let's see how long it lasts. Yeah, we're, we're all at 60 right now. So let me okay. get over there right behind you. I'm off. Phew. Holy crap. Wish I had a digital, but I don't. 70. <laughs> 65. Phew. Yeah, it's bloody hot. It's workable, though. I said we can we can do this. I can do this for the winter. That's not a big deal. That's still holding the 62. So even down here it might be 60. I've been up at the roof. It's hotter than yeah, that. Yeah, it's way, way hotter. Up, put that up. Yeah, I mean it's fine. Okay, signing off. All right, cool. It works. All right, guys. So I am here up in the berth of the boat. Um, we had some extra resin. Uh, last week a couple weeks ago maybe and uh, i was trying to do the fillets on this and it had dripped down um i found the best way to get rid of this is actually with a die grinder uh, i have a battery powered die grinder but just a, a deburring tool um i'm just gonna hit that real quick uh you do gotta be careful not to dig into the glass but it works really well as long as you have a little bit of uh, patience and control with it so i'm just gonna knock down these big drips here big drip and there's a couple more little ones here uh, a lot of this I just sanded out, and we're going to fill with this anyway, so I'm not overly concerned. Uh, it needs a little more sanding here, but uh, yeah. So I'm going to knock out those drips quick, and then I'm going to keep sanding. Um, basically what I'm doing is I'm prepping everything for glass, including the uh, the seams, the hull seams. Uh, we are going to do another layer of glass after we get the bulkheads in, just in between the bulkheads. One more layer of glass just to, for peace of mind. It's not necessary, but it's... Uh, the builder said if it makes us feel a little more comfortable, we can do that. So uh, we're gonna add another layer of glass on all the seams. Don't mind my mess here. Definitely gotta clean up. Um, so sand everything here. Uh, I'm gonna pull the peel ply off the walls on uh, these. Uh, remark that line there. Um, and then I'll sand the wall where the bulkheads go in. Um, we don't have the sole here made yet. Um, and I still have to do the cockpit area, which once I'm done with the berth, I will jump back there and hopefully knock that out all within a few hours here. So that's kind of the plan. Uh, you probably hear my little heater going in the background. Uh, we've tented off the boat working really well. It's probably, uh, geez, I want to say it's a high of 40 outside today. Um, I came in here, it's about noontime now and it was already like 60 degrees in here, uh, before I turned the heater on. So uh i just threw the heater on low just to kind of keep it warm make it comfortable to work i mean we're here right i'll show you real quick how this die grinder works and uh i'm just gonna get to it so thanks for watching be sure to like share and subscribe it doesn't cost a thing and it really helps us out with that youtube algorithm <laughs>
I guess. So in just a couple minutes, took all the drips down. And now I'll just hit everything with uh, the sander quick and uh, should be good to go. Got a bunch of cleaning to come up, but part of building the boat. So yesterday I sanded all of the hull joints down. Um, I sanded where all the bulkheads go in. Uh, pretty much everything I could. Uh, I figured it's just easier to get in here and sand everything now before I do the intermediate bulkheads, before we glue them in. So we picked up a Oneida Air Systems Dust Deputy uh, Cyclone. It's uh, basically a pre-cleaner before the vacuum. Use some scrap wood, a couple pieces of PVC. Made a little stand out of it underneath here. It goes right down to the uh, the tool holder for the legs. Uh, seems to work out good. Put a couple of screws through the top of the plywood here and just cut a hole in the plywood where the bucket sits. Seen the setup on Pinterest or something like that. I forget exactly where, but seemed like a pretty cheap, easy solution. Um, right now, I, I just have a kind of in between the boat and the tent um i do intend to get it up in the boat once we get floors in place uh hopefully i'll be here in the next week or two so we picked this up uh a few weeks back we haven't really had a chance to use it much uh since we bought it uh i did sand yesterday and i'm gonna try it out today all right guys so uh, i just vacuumed the whole boat uh just a lot of dust from sanding yesterday it wasn't uh nothing too crazy uh, i wanted to give a quick review on this Oneida Dust Deputy. Um, so I did just pull this off, and as you guys can see, there's quite a bit of dust. It still got sucked into the vacuum. Um, so that's what it's kind of supposed to avoid. I mean, this dust is pretty fine, so I kind of expect some to go into the vacuum. But, uh, I think we caught quite a bit of it, all in all. Um, Again, if you look at the bottom here, there's some stuff to it, just probably static electricity. And if you look in there, I mean, that's a pretty good amount of dust that we picked up. Um, so, I mean, we'll, we'll keep using it here and uh, we'll just kind of keep putting it to the test. So we are prepping once again to install bulkheads. Uh, same methods as always. Uh, we're going to do some painters tape on the hull. I'll glue some uh taped up blocks uh i'll lay the, the packing tape down uh on the hull just to the side of my line leave a little bit of a gap just enough where if any squeeze out does come out the tape doesn't get embedded into that resin so we did peel ply all our original panels uh we've been slacking with the peel ply lately a lot of it comes down to time when we're doing all these long strips we don't have a lot of time to really get the peel ply on before it starts kicking Again, we're doing large areas, large amounts of glass, and we're trying to just do it on the better days that we have. So again, I know a lot of people recommend using the peel ply, and if we had more time, we really would, we would love to. Uh, we're gonna try to use it a little bit more, more and more as we go here. I'm gonna do little smaller glassing jobs. But the finish you get after peel plying, and this is one of the, the main reasons. One, the peel ply reduces a mean blush, or it actually eliminates a mean blush. Uh, and that's basically a waxy layer on top of fiberglass, and it's a byproduct of the chemical reaction when it does it. Um, so what happens is the mean blush actually forms on, on the outside of the peel fly, and when you peel it off, it takes it all off with it. Um, the resin we're using is a non-blushing resin, um, so we don't have to worry too much about that but the texture it leaves is ready for, for glass afterwards. It's a kind of a coarse texture, kind of a rougher, and it allows that resin to really suck into the surface. So. Just, a, just a nice ASMR. <laughs> so I keep talking over Shh. it. Corner just peeled up a little bit. I'm not worried about that. We're gonna trim it anyway, so. All right, and we have all these fit now. We are gluing the last two in. I already did the front ones, those are on time lapse here. Uh, basically, we just used a piping bag. Uh, Roscoe 
from uh, Life on the Hulls uses these all the time and uh, really does work really well uh, for this application. Um, we've tried them for different things and it doesn't always work quite as well but it puts on a nice bead of uh, glue here. So glue everything in nice and easy. Cassie's in the background here mixing me up just a little bit more to finish off these intermediate bulkheads that we have. Yeah, once these are done, we will be able to put our flaws in. Uh, yeah, that's it's going to be, like I said, that's going to be a huge thing. It really does suck walking around right now with no flaws. And, you know, we're kind of bouncing around, as you guys can see. But I need enough to do one more bulkhead on. This bag's just about empty. And yeah, so I do the bead. Uh, we try to drop it in so we're not bouncing all over this uh, glue that we have here. So I rest it against the blocks the best I can and kind of just slide it in as gently as I can. And again, this is just to, as we get to the bottom, it starts pressing into that glue nice and tight. Give it a good push. You see all that nice squeeze out there? That's what we're looking for. And then it's all in there, good, good. If there are any little gaps, we do have to come back and fill it everything later. So it's not overly critical, but we do try to get everything as good as we can first time around. Again, piping bags are cheap. I think we've got a hundred of them for like five bucks, ten bucks. Any bakery store, Amazon, uh, you know, everybody knows Amazon. So Cassie can actually put a link to them in the description below if she wants. Uh, we do have an affiliate link through them now. Not quite sure how all that works, but we're still working on it, you know. Uh, it's so hard doing this social media thing. Yeah, we suck at the social media thing, guys. We do appreciate all the uh, comments on YouTube. We try to get back to as many as we can. That's the other one. Sorry, there's the other camera dying. Yeah, as many comments as we can feasibly reply to, we do. Um, some of them, obviously, some guys that do comment. We don't need a response there. It's, you know. We like them. Yeah, we, we definitely them. like everything. and we, we, do, we do read everything and take everybody's criticisms. Uh, definitely the heart because like some stuff that we just don't think about um, I forget the guy's name but he had mentioned something about our flotation Gunner, I think his name yeah uh, I was going to fill the bottom of the hulls with flotation foam and he uh, he had mentioned something I didn't really think about where if the boat gets swamped that might actually make the boat unstable um, so we're going to look into that a little bit more I'm going to talk to the uh, designer of the boat and we're going to again I kind of do, do our due diligence on it, just something that doesn't pop into mind right away, you know, when you're thinking about it. So I definitely appreciate all the comments out there, everybody's expertise in different fields definitely makes a difference. What's that? Is that all right? Where, where it's not going to go anywhere, right? It's not going to pop off? I think so. I can't really see. Everything pulled in nice and tight. Yeah. Me... I don't want to go up there because I don't want anything yeah. to shift anymore. We can get those cameras off uh, off the side. Yep. All right, guys, that's a wrap for tonight. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and comment because we appreciate it immensely. And thank you for all of our subscribers out there already. So yesterday we glued in all our bulkheads. Everything's nice and dry now. What I'm going to do tonight is I'm just going to mark everything and get these kind of cut to where they need to be um, on the height. I left everything tall just in case uh, something sat a little different than we anticipated. Everything's down kind of where we expected it to be. So we've got a couple little gaps to fill, but nothing major. I'm going to mark everything out, all the heights of the floors. What I'll do is I'll take my level and I will run it across the floor, uh, the bridge deck like so, level, make a mark. And then what I'm gonna do is I took a piece of a piece of scrap glass here, and that's just been that's two layers of glass on either side of our foam. Um, and what I'll do is I'll just mark down from there. Uh, that way, when we cut this bulkhead, our floor will sit flush with our bridge deck. Um, it, all the way across the boat, it's, uh, the floor is flush with the bridge deck. The bridge deck is actually the floor in the middle of the boat. Uh, I'll start up here. I'm in the berth right now. Uh, I don't know how how well you guys can see this, but. 
Uh, so yeah, I'm in the berth now. I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna move back. Um, unfortunately, the lighting in the cabin isn't very good right now. Uh, we're working on getting another light, just haven't gotten it yet. It's definitely on our list of things to do. Yeah, it's kind of the plan for tonight and I'm gonna get going. Thanks for watching. Now I already do have marks on this wall to my right, to the, the starboard side here. Um, those marks were made prior to all of this. Uh, in, like, I'm not sure how well you guys can focus on this, but there are marks there. Uh, those are the height of this bedboard. Um, so I'm just taking a happy medium from the bridge deck across. And like I said, we're gonna get a level line and then just mark down from there where we need to be. It's there. And so line across. So from that line there, I'm going to take this piece of scrap like that and we are just going to mark a few little spots and then connect the dots. Alright, now our bedboard and everything is all pretty close to the same thickness if there's a, a slight discrepancy. Uh, some panels only have one layer of glass, others have two. Um, this scrap piece I'm using actually has two layers of glass on each side. Most of our soles have two layers. So again, if like the bedboard only had one, I, I forget exactly which ones had one layer, but if the bedboard only had one layer, it's not gonna make much of a difference. You're only talking about a, a couple of millimeters difference in thickness, so not overly concerned with that. That's fairly straight. And connect the dots. And the elbow's probably in the way, but sorry guys. Uh, just for anybody ever thinking about building a boat, spend a lot of times in cramped tight positions, down in the halls, on your knees, just rough positions all in all. So again, sorry for any uh, bad shots here, but that's kind of what we get. Again, you want to build a boat, you got to go through this stuff. So, all right, and this will be our cut for the floor. This bottom line here. So, I'm gonna X all the scrap. And that's it. On to the next. All right, I had some issues with the rolling shutter with uh, using this light, and hopefully we don't have issues right now. Um, but I'm probably gonna throw you guys up on time lapse and uh, just kind of knock these out anyway. Uh, you see me do the first one. Everything's the same process all the way down. So we'll mark level lines, and then from there mark down, and we're ready to trim. Bulkheads marked out. These are actually marked out on the back side, so you can't really see it. Probably cut everything tomorrow night. A little bit of cleanup to do tonight. Most spots where we pulled the tape off, uh, it didn't have an issue. It didn't stick in the resin, but there was a couple little spots where the tape still got underneath the resin. Let's go around with a, a razor blade real quick. We'll just pop that out real quick to clean it all up good. From there, we're ready to fill it in tabs, so I just don't want to leave it and forget about it. So I'll cut everything tomorrow night. I'm going to go around and clean up right now. Just clean up any little tape spots I see. Any hot glue that's squeezed out onto the fiberglass, clean that all up as well. That'll be it for the night, but uh, we're definitely getting there. So thanks for watching. Now some of this stuff has been a little uh, arduous or tedious, however you want to call it. It's all going to be done. So. Definitely appreciate uh, all of our subscribers out there. We do appreciate it. And uh, without you guys, you know, this channel wouldn't be possible. <laughs> What's that stuff? Go, go. Hey Siri. Stop music. Hey Siri. Oh, Siri sucks. Alexa listens. <laughs>